Hello and welcome to Spindle TV. My name is Landon Shaughnessy and I'm going to be your host tonight. How are you guys and girls doing? Uh, hopefully you had a good week. Sorry about last week. I uh, had to get some things done and I needed as much time as possible to get everything done uh, that I had on my agenda. And so I had to postpone or, or kind of cancel last week's class. So thanks for coming back and joining me this week. And um, with uh, 4th of July right around the corner, uh, you know, I've been uh, kind of promoting a Fourth of July project pack and stuff like that. Well, we're not. We're gonna. We'll talk a little bit about that, but we're actually gonna create some projects. Uh, I want to talk to you uh, about uh, uh, making some projects that we can do. I've got some flags that we can uh, lay out and make up, and I've also kind of created some files for you guys with proportionally perfect flag uh, DXF or SVG files uh, that'll be available for you to download for free. Uh, and uh, that way, no matter what size you scale it up to, you know, flags that you happen to be making, you'll have all the proportions correct and everything. And we're going to kind of go through that and, uh, and everything as well. So uh, that'll be uh, very, very cool. Let's see here. <clears throat> let's delete that. All right, let's go ahead and get started. <coughs> Excuse me, Lord have mercy. Let's get started and um, move over to All right, let's go over to here And it's almost like I forgot how to transfer over to uh, my computer. What camera am I? I'm at camera three cool let's get me down um, in the bottom left corner all right let's get that microphone out of the way there that little dot there would be throwing me off all right where are we at looking good okay so um, Basically, the on the American flag, it has standard proportions. Um, <clears throat> you know, when it comes to the American flag, as far as you know, uh, ever since Executive Order One Hundred Eight Three Four, uh, the flags, proportions, the spacing of the stars, and all that has been laid out for us. Um, for those uh, that uh, you know, are ever wanting to you know make the flag, whatever the case may be, and I've got that table and everything uh, here uh, that basically kind of gives us the proportions we need. Well, I've kind of done the work for you guys and girls, and uh, I have uh, laid out the vectors um, for two different types of flags, the standard 50-star uh, American flag and the 1776 uh, um, Betty Ross flag and uh, Betsy Ross. I don't know why I said Betty. I don't think she would like me calling her Betty, <laughs> but uh, um, this uh, these flag proportions are based on uh, the hoist of the flag. Basically, the union, the hoist of the union uh, is the width of it, and the fly of the union is the height. And based on a one inch by one point nine inch union, uh, with the spacing of our stars and everything, that kind of gives us the layout of the flag. And so that's exactly what I've done here uh, is uh, I've created these vector files for you guys and I'm going to make them available. Uh, you can use them with V carving, you can use them with modeling, you can use them with all kinds of things uh, so you'll have them. But I want to, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, talk about them. Now we're going to, of course, this is a one inch by 1.9 scale rendering, you know, uh, one by 1.9. And um, we're going to size it up to fit an appropriate project tonight. Uh, and uh, we're going to go through and do some cool things and make some cool flags. But we're, all, we're not going to just be talking about flags tonight. We're going to also be talking about some uh, pretty uh, nifty kind of uh, uh, 4th of July projects that we might be able to make uh, and, and things like that. So um, let's uh, jump right into it. I stopped talking here. Uh, first things first. Um, let's go into here and let's look at 
some porch signs. Now we don't have you know a whole lot of time to go over every kind of sign and project we can make. Uh, I do want to get into uh, making the flags and all, but let's start off with a uh, pretty cool porch sign. We're going to open up another window. We'll come back to this window in a moment when we start laying out our flag and doing some cool things with it. But um, on this one, now we're going to do a vertical sign, something that would sit on a porch uh, that would uh, lean like on the two sides of your entry door or they might be just on the front porch kind of as kind of cool little welcome signs that come in uh, if you will and uh, for this sign I'm going to go with a with a typical basically one by eight board so we're gonna go seven and a quarter inches wide let me make sure let me break out my tape measure and make sure that uh, no I'm sorry um, Bear with me, let me see here. A one by 12 board, I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, 11 and a quarter, we're gonna go 11 and a quarter wide. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, 11 and a quarter inches wide and we're gonna go um, probably about 36 inches tall. And you can, you know, uh, you can size this to fit your machine, or if you have the features, if you've got Vetrix software, you can do tiling, a tile job, uh, things like that. So we're going to talk about tiling and all for those that don't have uh, the ability to, you know, do a full 36 inch long board on their CNC. So we'll do a bit of tiling to create the tool pass and stuff and all, but uh, we're going to go three quarters of an inch thick on this. And, uh, for this project, since I will be uh, eventually tiling it um, later when we go to, when I have to rotate my piece, my pieces will be rotated 90 degrees after we get all the design work done and stuff. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to work in the center for the layout. And then when I rotate it, I'm going to transfer over to the bottom left hand corner and recalculate the tool pass. But we're going to go, we're going to stay with the uh, center for right now for the job start point. And uh, we're going to uh, zero out on the material surface for this job. Pretty cool. All right. Now, on the um, signs, let's uh, start out with just kind of a basic one. Uh, let's go ahead and go into... Alexa, stop. <laughs> Alexa's jumping in on me there. Uh, we're going to uh, start off with our text box. I don't know why I opened that. Let's open the text box up. Now remember, dafont, D-A-F-O-N-T dot com is a great place to find thousands of cool creative fonts uh, for you guys and girls uh, and things. Uh, so uh, definitely, you know, dafont uh, would be pretty cool uh, to get some cool creative fonts for this project and all. But uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna lay out three of these different vertical type signs. Okay. Uh, so the first one, uh, let's type in uh, "let" and the word "ring" R I N G. And let's go with for our font. Let's kind of go with a little bit of a decorative font here. Let's see what. Uh, since I'm going all capitals, I don't want Brillion because it, uh, let's see, don't want Forte. Where in the world is my cool font? That'll work. All right, we're going to go uh, on this on the text height. Uh, we're gonna separate that in, uh, first of all. So when you when you write text in a block like I did, and I'll change that font now that I'm looking at it. But when you write in a text block where you type your text, hit enter, and you create a second line, when you create that type of text block, you can right click on the text and break that block into individual text lines. So now my let is one set of text and my ring is another. Um, the let is going to be moved up to the top here and we're going to size it up. I'm going to hold down my shift key when I'm in transform mode. For those of you that are new, when you double click to select an item, it puts it in transform mode and I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to scale this up a bit. There we go. 
and I'm going to uh, go back into the font now that I can work with this one by one and I'm going to um, come in and I don't know maybe all capitals wasn't a good choice because it's not looking good let's go with smaller case uh, let there we go that doesn't look too shabby all right on this I do want to do some spacing so we got to edit text and spacing so edit text spacing and curve that's the tool right next to your two text boxes and uh, I'm gonna hold the shift key down and I'm gonna push these letters apart a bit so let's go there awesome and now if I wanted this to be spaced out you know kind of evenly across the top I could have drawn it within a text box so I could have stretched it to that text box and things but I'm kind of freehanding the, the, the top and bottom text. Uh, the middle text may be a little bit different, so we'll do that one a little different. But uh, I'm gonna bring this down and make sure that it is centered left to right, which it is, excellent. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw a line right underneath let, space bar to finish the line, and I'm going to move that down just a little bit okay now ring at the bottom here I'm gonna go into ring and you want you don't want too many different types of fonts uh, and things like that but um, it, it is uh, it's fine if uh, you know if you have you know a few different fonts but I'm gonna stick with two so uh, this is uh, Bernadette, so I'm going to use Bernadette down here on ring as well. So let's go up to Bernadette. And on ring, once again, I don't want it to be kind of cursive. I do want some spacing in between. So I'm going to go into my Edit Text Spacing and Curve tool, hold down the Shift key, and kind of pop these apart a little bit just to give a little bit of spacing in between them. Uh, let's see. That looks good uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and once again I'm gonna size it up a bit knowing that my lowercase g is there cool and then I'm gonna make sure that is centered left to right then once again I'm gonna take and draw a line above the word ring these uh, different sections here are gonna kind of be painted red white and blue red at the top white in the middle blue at the bottom kind of give it that American feel right uh, and uh, everything and then you know your color text you know with the red top you could do blue text or white text or whatever you want to do but uh, we can kind of mix it up now inside this area here inside this area here uh, I'm gonna I want freedom right so let freedom ring uh, that'll be the first of three and uh, so I don't want uh, the text to go all the way to the width. So what I'm going to do is close out of this. And on that rectangle that I just drew right here, I'm going to hold the shift key down and kind of squeeze it in in the middle right about there. And on the text, uh, I want the words, ver the letters vertical, but I do want them one above the other. So uh, in this one, I want a nice kind of square type font, uh, possibly like an Arial Black or something like that. Uh, I want my letters to be about uh, two to three inches tall, but that may change once I get everything laid out. We'll take a look at that. Um, and uh, I'm going to go all capitals on this. So F, let's uh, not hit that. Let's hit the enter sign. R, E, E, D, O, M. All right, cool beans. Okay, and on here now, had I had drawn this text within a vector box, let's let's look at that. Let's go ahead and move this to the side for a minute. Had I used the other tool, draw text within a vector box, I could have selected my box here. Let's try that again. Boop. 
boop, boop that. Uh, I could have stuck in my box here, and as I am uh, going along, it's going to uh, help size my text accordingly based on, over here on the right, no margins, normal margins, or wide margins, right, depending on what I want. Um, and I'm going to go no margins, or normal margins here. But I do want to stretch the vertical characters the, as much as I can, as well as the horizontal characters. Yeah, da, 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 da. Let's see here. Uh, let's turn off the stretch horizontal. I'll size that up a little bit different. I do want it a little bit wider, but not that wide. Um, let's see here. Let freedom, that'll work. All right. Now that I have this uh, fairly laid out, I do want to hold the shift key down. I've double clicked on it to put it in transform mode. And I want to hold the shift key down because I'm actually gonna pull this down a little bit. And I want it to be pulled evenly on both sides. So holding the shift key down will keep it centered to where it's at. Um, I do want to hold the shift key down and kind of pull it out a little bit, not too much. I don't want it too big. And uh, this will be our uh, our first sign okay so that'll be number one now I'm gonna select all this and I'm gonna move it to a new layer and I'm gonna call this uh, let freedom ring right and I'm gonna go ahead and I'll make this uh, kind of a red color and that way I can turn that layer off okay that one's done all right, let's add another layer here. Might as well uh, do that, and let's lay out the second one. We'll, we'll, we'll create the toolpath for each of them as we go, but let's create our second sign, and our second sign is gonna be a welcome sign, so we're gonna welcome people into our homes uh, and stuff like that, And uh, but uh, for the O in welcome, we'll use a star, and then we'll add some stripes to the bottom. No, uh, Let's see here, once again, I'm actually going to draw a rectangle over the whole board and I'm going to pull it, I'm going to hold the shift key and pull it in just a little bit because I don't want it as wide as the board, about like that. And at the bottom I'm going to bring it up to right about here. Okay. At the top, I don't want it right at the top and I do have margins but I will pull that down just a little bit there okay and once again we're gonna go into our uh, wrong tool we're gonna go into our text in a draw text in a box vector box and we're going to type in welcome so W enter E enter L enter C enter O enter M enter E enter right and on this one it would have helped if I had the uh, box selected. So let's undo that and select the right box, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do that one more time. W, enter, E, L, C, O, M, E. All right, excellent. So we've got that laid out and um, in all. And I think I'm going to stick with uh, the Arial Black on this but I am going to widen it up a little bit. So I'm gonna hold down my shift key and just kind of widen it up just a little bit. Not too much, not too, too much. And once I've done that, I don't need my box anymore. I can go ahead and get rid of that. Um, now for the O on welcome, I'm gonna convert the text to a curve. So that'll break it up so I can, you know, uh, isolate that O. And I'm gonna come in and I'm going to find the center of that O and I'm gonna draw a star. Now it's very important with stars when it comes to American flags or stars you know, that have to do with patriotic, uh, you know, the, the patriotic stars for unions and all, uh, you're um, going to be at a inner radius percentage of about 38.2. Uh, what that does for us, I, it's usually 38 let me see if let me verify 38.2 yeah 38.2 uh, what's important about uh, the star is that this top leg going across here is straight across if we go 
let me pull a uh, guide bar down to and snap it to there. If we were at a uh, different angle, let's say we were at 34, then our top angle would be slided in. If we are, or 33 I said, but uh, if we are a little high, then we'd be angled up. We want it straight across and that magic number is 38.2, okay? Very important when it comes to patriotic flags. All right, and what I wanna do with this is now that I have that, I can go ahead and get rid of my O. So we have welcome here. And I am going to bring that star down just a little bit, just to make it look a little even there. Cool beans. All right, now I want some stripes on this. Uh, so we're gonna do some stripes down here at the bottom. And I'm actually going to uh, draw two rectangles. Actually just one. Why draw what you can copy, right? So we'll get the first one right and then we'll copy it down to, for the second one. Um, but I'm gonna go into um, transform mode again, double click on it and I'm gonna pull that in just a little bit on both sides. And now I'm going to go into node editing mode. In node editing mode, I wanna turn the um, top uh, line, the top span, I wanna turn that into a Bezier curve as well as the bottom span, a Bezier curve. And we're just gonna kinda create a bit of a waving kind of stripe here. Okay, let's get it, uh, I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna grab the nodes on the end and kinda pull that down just, uh, ah, we'll leave it up like that. Let's just pull this down here and pull this up. All right, that looked good, that looks good to me. Um, so now I'm gonna hold down my control key, control lets me make a copy, and I'm gonna drag my control key down a bit. Pull that there. And on this one, I'm going to change the stripe just a little bit. I kind of want it to, no, actually, I'm not gonna, I don't know what I'm thinking. I'm not gonna change the stripe. So we're gonna go with our welcome sign here. Uh, now this will be V-carved. Uh, we're even gonna V-carve the rectangles with a flat depth. Uh, so the, the stripes with a flat depth. So we get a nice, these nice V-shaped walls and everything for when we're painting and everything. Um, Let's see here. Uh, uh, Suicide at all times says uh, to keep them symmetrical, uh, you have to uh, select the handles uh, and hit H or V. Right, so um, what he's talking about when we were in node editing mode, node editing mode, if I were to select the handles here, um, I can, you know, pull them symmetrically uh, this way, but uh, he is, um, you know, stating hit H or V, um, and I'm not sure what that did there, bud. Uh, I didn't see H or V do anything. Let me go back there. H is a horizontal line. V is a vertical line for uh, guidelines, uh, uh, suicide at all times when I'm in node editing mode. But uh, I might, you may, you may, you may uh, mean like pull it down and hit H or V. Yeah, nothing happens there either. So uh, be a little bit more descriptive, suicide at all times, because um, H and V aren't working when you're in node editing mode. Let me know what you're uh, what you're uh, referring to and we'll kind of uh, talk about that a little bit more. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get that. Uh, let's see here. Get those stripes in and pull that up a little bit. There we go. All right. 
now the um, I do want my curve not that curve I want this curve to be a little bit more in there Cool beans. All right, got the stripes. All right, so that's going to be our uh, welcome sign. Very simple, right? Uh, we can give that uh, some nice uh, colors. Uh, the red, the welcome, like the uh, welcome being red, uh, the star being blue, and the stripes being blue with a white background, right? You can paint your board white. Um, what well, you know, whatever, whatever really tickles your fancy on that one, um, and uh, and everything. But now we're going to take that and we're going to move that to a new layer. We'll call this layer Welcome. Give that kind of a blue color. Cool beans. And uh, I'm going to turn Welcome off and go back to layer two since I have it. Let's get rid of layer one. Uh, since I have it blank here and we'll create our third and final one for the vertical signs uh, For the last one. We're going to do kind of a uh, tribute to 1776 and Independence Day uh, And stuff kind of an established and all that so we're going to go into our rectangle tool and we're going to draw a rectangle Whoa. Uh, Get it across, you know, I'm, I'm holding down the left mouse button and dragging it across from angle to, or you know diagonal corner to diagonal corner and and um, uh, creating that rectangle border basically and on this one. I'm going to kind of pull it in and um, Let's uh, Go ahead and uh, go into Bear with me one one momento ladies and gentlemen Uh, let's go into the uh, text box again draw text within a vector box now this one before I um, do anything I want to size my box I do want to bring it down a little bit not much there and I want to actually bring this up to about here and now we can go in and uh, we're gonna go a m e r i c a why oh why all right let's close that let me select my box the proper box this time there we go do that one more time okay and uh let's try a different font this time uh i want to go with Something a little bit more, not really Western. I don't know that that's not the right term. Uh, no, elephant definitely is not going to be it. Okay. We'll go kind of with an IFC railroad. And... On this I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm gonna pull it out just a little bit not much get it here get rid of my box and then I need to bring in an image for this next part I want to I want a laurel wreath uh, on here so we're gonna import a bitmap image from my downloads I'm gonna grab uh, this laurel wreath image right here and we're going to go into our trace bitmap tool. I'm going to do a black and white tracing. And I'm going to pull this up to 75. That's kind of my magic number. I work between 50 and 75 in most cases. Uh, default corner fit is my go to. Uh, this is a high resolution image, so I'll leave the noise filter at 2. Uh, preview, apply, and close. 
and then I can either delete the image or turn off the bitmap layer that was created when I imported that image. Uh, for this here, I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard and I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to size it a bit. Cool beans. And I'm actually going to stretch it just a little. There we go. And let's go into our text box here. We're going to go uh, 1776. And for that text, I'm going to go with a Georgia. Georgia, non bold. And we're going to align that to the center left to right. Get that there. And I'm going to do the um, established date, you know, kind of deal, uh, you know, established and all. And so I'll leave that established in Georgia as well. Let's come up here and go EST period. And let's go with a height of about one inch. Now you can put the EST above uh, or below your choice. I'm going to go below. Let's bring 1776 up a little bit. Something about like that. And um, you can, uh, if you want to add any other decorations or anything, uh, you know, to this, of course you can, a, a decorative border, uh, you know, uh, of somewhat of some kind or, or something, whatever it may be. Uh, what I'm going to do on this is I'm actually going to size down America a little bit, not crunch it too much. Right about there. I don't want it looking too uh, too short and stocky. Stand by a minute. I'm gonna hold the shift key when I do that so everything is kind of symmetrical. And then lower that back down to there. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna draw a box. I'm gonna go right above the rural, uh, laurel, laurel wreath. And I'm gonna draw a box here I'm going to make sure that box is centered from left to right. And I'm going to offset it. I want to offset it. Uh, but before I offset it, I want to change my corners here. Now, when I'm in the rectangle tool, uh, if I come into radius corners, I get these green nodes on all four points and everything. And, uh, you know, that, that allows me to kind of pull these, you know, uh, internal or external radiuses as I pull these well I want kind of an internal radius I want to come here let's go pretty big right about there and um, I'm now going to come into node editing mode and I'm going to cut the vector on this bottom green node in the corner here and same thing on the black one over here cut the vector because I want to delete that bottom span, okay? On the back end node editing mode, I'm gonna select both of these vectors and I'm gonna use my arrow keys and I'm gonna pull them down a little bit. Right about there is gonna be good. And now I wanna offset this. I'm gonna offset it outward. And I'm gonna go probably about a quarter of an inch. Let me see how much a quarter is. Uh, let's go the other direction inward because of the way the line was drawn and let's go a little bit bigger I'm gonna go 3 8 0.375 so I'm hitting control Z when I'm backing out of something just control Z lets me undo quickly what you know um, is uh, what I did so that way I can just control Z and then redo whatever it is I need to do. 
Uh, now, I've got two open vectors here. I'm actually going to join them and close them with a straight line. So we're going to join and close once and twice to close that off. So I have a closed vector here. And uh, this will be very simple sign number three. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, on layer two, I'm just simply going to rename that. And I'm going to call this America. Right. All right. So for vertical signs, you know, think of some cool things, uh, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, that, that might be uh, cool. Happy Independence Day, 4th of July, whatever you want. But um, these signs, you know, pretty much they're not going to be they're They're not just limited to 4th of July. Um, I could have these on my front porch year round. That's why I don't I don't really have 4th of July in there or anything like that. But you could do whatever you want to do uh, with that. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn that layer off. And I'm going to go back to let freedom ring. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab a star. Oops. Make sure you see what popped up there, the America. Make sure when you're drawing, uh, when you change uh, layers and everything, that you have the layer active. I forgot to activate the layer that I was drawing in. Uh, therefore, when I drew the star, it put it on that America layer and it brought the America layer back visible again. That's what, you know, so make sure you're always uh, there. Um, so I'm going to take that star. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a rectangle. I'm just basically going to outline this here with square corners and one on this side. And I'm going to go ahead and bring my star in. And let me get that star sized up. Again, 38.2 uh, for that um, inner uh, radius percentage. That's what you're wanting. All right, excellent. Now I'm gonna hold down the control key and I'm gonna drag out uh, some stars. And of course I said I'm gonna hold the control key but I was pressing the shift as I was saying that. So I'm just gonna drag out, uh, I'm gonna be spacing these in just a minute. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, cool beans. All right, now what I wanna do is I wanna select these stars. I'm gonna select them first. All right, all the stars first. So I drew a box, made sure all the stars were 100% in that box and it selected them all. Now I'm gonna hold the shift key down and select my rectangle last. Make sure it is the rectangle that's here. And I'm gonna go into the alignment and align to selection. I'm aligning to that last selection. That last selection being my rectangle. I wanna center the stars there. Now they're all stacked on top of each other in the center. Now I'm gonna come down here to space the selection vertically, and that way they're spaced equal distance. Let's do the same thing with these stars. I'm gonna select these stars here, hold down my shift key and select this rectangle last. Center align inside the last vector vertically. All right, cool. Now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna take freedom and I'm gonna convert it to a curve. I'm gonna take one of these stars, I'm gonna hold down my control key. So I'm making a copy and I'm gonna snap it to the center of that. And I'm gonna size it up. And then I'm going to get rid of my O there. So the star will be the O. Once again, let me bump that down one little bump. And uh, 13 stars, six on the left, six on the right, 13 stars, 13 stars, 1776 kind of thing, you know, right? For, uh, you know, Betsy Ross, all that wonderful stuff. So um, yeah, right? Declaration of Independence, the original 13 colonies and all that good stuff. Um, Size that down just a little bit. 
All right, so I just wanted to dress up Let Freedom Ring a little bit, and now I've got my three signs. Now for me, I have to rotate my projects uh, 90 degrees because my x-axis runs, uh, you know, my, the length of my table, the longest length of my table is along the x. And with these being 36 inches tall, I need to run along the x. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm simply going to go into my job setup. I'm going to uh, change this to 36 here, change this to 11 and a quarter here, and I'm gonna select my design and I'm gonna hit the number nine on the keyboard twice just to rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, simple enough. I'll go ahead and turn off that layer. Let's turn on America and select that. Hit the number nine on the keyboard twice to get that rotated. Turn that layer off, my welcome sign. Go ahead and hit the number nine twice to get that rotated and all that happy jazz. Now that one didn't quite center, so I'm gonna select it and make sure that it is center on the material. There we go. All right, uh, let's go ahead and go back to uh, America. Let's make sure this is centered. That one didn't center quite well. So once again, center to the material, wonderful. And let freedom ring should have centered. Yeah, it did. Just in case. There we go. It was slightly off. All right. So uh, now we've got uh, we've got our three signs rotated. Now I'm ready to create my tool pass. Uh, so for this, what I would like to do is um, on this rectangle here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete that rectangle. Now that I had the stars laid out. Okay, uh, this rectangle down here, I'm gonna delete that one as well. This middle rectangle here, I'm actually gonna go into node editing mode and I'm going to delete this span on the right and delete the span on the left. I want two lines there because I'm gonna use a profile tool path with a V bit to cut a groove there, okay? All right, and um, now I'm ready to tool path. So the first tool path I'll do will be that profile cut. That'll be fine. And I want to uh, go down, um, yeah, an eighth of an inch will be fine with my 60 degree V-bit, but I want to be on the line. And I want to choose this line, this line, this line, and this line here. And I want to calculate that. I'm going to call this my... We'll call it, uh, not really stripes, but I'll call it that. Stripes and calculate. Okay, preview that visible toolpath, right? So we kind of have that little bit of a divider. Uh, for me, eighth of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch, I really like with the 60 degree V bit. Uh, I try not to go too much more than that for some nice, not not really thin line stripes, but for, for a project this size, they would be considered thin line stripes. But uh, eighth inch to three sixteenths is kind of my go-to on that. All right, now I have a choice here. I could uh, just V carve this in, right? Or I could do some kind of raised element as well, okay? Um, you know, where uh, let ring is gonna be V carved in, uh, the stars might be v-carved in, but freedom is raised up, um, where everything is carved around the word freedom and it's kind of raised to give it that 3D element. I think that would look very cool. Uh, or I could just v-carve the whole thing. Let's do both and see uh, the difference between the two. So I'm gonna go ahead and select uh, the freedom and stars. Make sure I don't select that line. Let ring. This is gonna be a V-carve, just a straight V-carve toolpath. Uh, I'm gonna have a flat depth. For me, uh, when I'm doing flat depths and all, um, I generally don't go uh, too deep, You know, maybe quarter of an inch being the max, but in this case, I'm gonna go an eighth of an inch, 0.125, and I am gonna use an eighth inch end mill to let it kinda of help do some of the flat work wherever it can. Uh, if you don't have an eighth inch end mill in your arsenal of tools, grab one. Very handy to have an eighth inch end mill, even a sixteenth in your arsenal of tools. Uh, we're going to go ahead and calculate that and uh, preview the visible tool pass. 
right? And so we have a sign, you know, and we could um, come in and uh, give our, you know, cuts some color, whatever it uh, may be, you know, however you wanted to color things, right? So if you wanted to paint your backboard or or uh, what have you. Uh, you could go opposite of that. Uh, we could go on uh, the text. We could go blue, not purple guys, blue. And then the stripes, we could go red on that, right? Either way, whichever one tickles your fancy. Uh, you could do a kind of a combination mix. You can, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat, right? Um, uh, so just to kind of give a little bit of, uh, you know, an idea. So these would be uh, kind of vertical signs. They lean up on your porch. Uh, you can put a little stand on the back of them if you wanted to, like a little uh, kickstand or something, uh, or just lean them kind of up against the wall, uh, flower pot behind them, whatever you wanted. Uh, so that would be uh, version one of our first sign. Now let's look at version two of our first sign. On this one, I am going to uh, come back in and I am going to draw a rectangle around, uh, back around the word freedom. And because I drew that rectangle last, it is the top vector. So when I select it, it is selecting that top vector, which is that rectangle. It's not selecting the lines underneath it when I click on it and stuff. Uh, it was the last vector selected. And on this one, uh, we'll go with a V-carve. Uh, we'll go with a V-carve on ring. Let, I'm gonna do the, t the two texts as one item. Uh, and uh, we're gonna do a flat depth and everything on that. So we're gonna calculate that. Oh, hold on a second. I grabbed a stripe and a strip. There we go, calculate that. I was wondering, I was like, there's no open vector there. And um, the stars, that'll be my second tool path. Again, I'm gonna do a V carve with a flat depth. Okay. And then for freedom, I'm gonna grab the rectangle and the word freedom. The word freedom. And this one's gonna be a uh, V carve tool path with a flat depth again. Uh, I could probably you I could probably get away with a quarter inch in mill to be a little bit faster so I'm gonna add in I'm leaving the eighth but I'm gonna add in a quarter inch in mill as well to kind of help speed up the cut and we're gonna calculate that okay now on the uh, stripes uh, for let freedom ring here um, I want to, first of all, let me go into uh, the visible toolpath here and I'm going to turn on solid mode, right? So I can see, you know, where my cut is cutting. And this is going to be the high part of my angle, uh, that angle that's going to come down to the eighth of an inch. And so I actually want to make sure that the right side of my V-bit cuts there so it's kind of a nice straight line there. So I'll show you what I mean here. I'm going to go ahead and create my two stripes and I'm only going to do the two this time because this is going to be separated by this cavity. The stars will be, but I'm going to do the two stripes here. It's going to be a profile cut on the line, cutting an eighth inch deep with my 60 degree V bit. Now I'm not going to do any offset right now. I'm going to calculate this tool path and let's preview all of these tool paths. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll preview the visible tool pass. Sweet. F9, center to material. Um, all right. Now let's go ahead and uh, separate this with some colors. Uh, the reason why I did the text separate is 
uh, because I'm going to make the text red. So we'll make the text red. Red. Okay. I'm going to make the stars blue. Blue. All right. And uh, freedom in here. Uh, let's go ahead and let's do that one uh, in blue as well for right now. We'll do that one in blue as well. We can go always go in and change it. All right, so it helps if I uh, do both. There we go. That blue almost kind of looks like a purple, but uh, there we go. Now my two stripes going across here. This is what I want to look at. So let's let's actually zoom into this. Okay, and let's turn the color off just for one second, and let's actually uh, let me see if my preview simulation quality is up. It's up high enough. Um, but my V cut, when it cut, uh, it left a little ridge right here. That's part of that angle because it wasn't right on, it wasn't coming right even with that, right? So that means I need to shift those lines. Basically, I'm gonna do an offset, an offset uh, in that toolpath because I want, when this V cut cuts, I kinda want it to be right in line with that angle cut of the square that went around, um, that went around uh, the freedom. And if we go into the 2D view here and in solid view, you can see that my rectangle that, you know, that, that did all the flat work around here, it stopped at the red line, but my V bit went past, right? So when the V bit was cutting down to that eighth of an inch, it left this little lip in there don't want that so on the profile cut uh, one of the things that's going to be important is you know I want to be either inside the cut or on the outside of the cut um, when I do my allowance offset and I, I'm sorry uh, when I do my allowance offset I have to be either inside or outside of the cut I don't want to I have to be because when I'm on the line I don't get the offset allowance option right so in this case I want to be on the inside of the line but I need to make sure, you know, inside left and outside right. Let me tell you what that means really quick. Let's turn off the tool pass for a minute. Excuse me. And let's go into node editing mode. Now, um, you always have at the start of a line or a span, you always have a green node. That's your start point. And it generally ends with a black node, your end point. Now, from that start point, let's say the start point's at the bottom, uh, you know, on my line here. Okay, we'll call it my finger, my line here. The start points at the bottom. Left side of the line is over to the left. Right side of the line is over to the right. But now if that start point is at the top, left side's actually over here and right side's over here, which it would kind of throw you off. You think left and right, but you got to think about where the start point is going. Okay, so you got to think about where the start point is. So my start point is at the bottom and since I need to go outward uh, from that line, I want to be on the outside of the line. On the outside of the line. Hold on. I just, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dumb I want to be on the inside of the line. The inside of the line. All right. And um, now I'm going to be on the inside of the line left here. But if I do inside the line on this one, I'm going to be up here where the let is. And I don't want that. I need to be, you know, the other way around. So I need to turn this line upside down and you make this the start point. So I'm on the left side of the line here and the left side of the line here. Okay. Left side of the line here, left side of the line here. So when my cut comes, it'll just, you know, cut like that. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select, we'll do this line first. Hold that. Select this line second. And in my profile toolpath, I'll just use the uh, order. I'm going to use the vector selection order. That'll kind of where it'll cut, move over, and then cut upward. 
right? So vector selection order on that. Now, I do wanna be on the inside left of the line, and this is the important, the important part of, of how far do I need to step over? Um, one would think that it's the full, if, if it's a 60 degree quarter inch V-bit, that it's the full eighth of an inch, right? Well, it's not. It's gonna more be like a 16th of an inch, but let's start off with the eighth. And since I need to move off the line to the left, that's gonna be a negative. I'm moving away from the line, not towards it. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. It's gonna be a positive number. I'm moving away from the line, not towards it. If I was going towards the line, it's a negative number. If I'm going away from the line, it's a positive number, that space. Positive space, negative space, positive space, negative space. So um, I wanna be, I wanna uh, go away from the line, so it's gonna be a positive number, so it's gonna be 0.125. Now if I calculate this toolpath, okay, and uh, we can now see where the cut is and an eighth of an inch is a little bit too far, right? Um, we have to understand that my V-bit, the back side of my V-bit, it's gonna be it's gonna be close. So we, we're more gonna be a sixteenth. But let's cut it. Let's cut it so we can look at it in the actual preview, so you can see what I'm referring to. So let's go into all these tool paths here, and let's go to the 3D view, reset our preview, and preview the visible tool path. Now let's uh, kind of come here and down and let's really zoom into that corner. And you can see that the V-bit was nowhere near the corner, right? So we're a little too far away. Let's go into the profile cut. Let's cut that in half, 0 0.0625. Uh, we may even be at a 32nd, uh, but I believe a 16th is gonna be the, our magic number. Uh, let's find out, I could be wrong. Let's reset that and once again, check off the tool pass that we want to preview and preview those visible tool paths. So it's either gonna be a 16th or a 32nd. It's pretty consistent. If, oh, no. Laney, think, use your head. It's a no, it's a zero, zero, because it's cutting on the inside of the line just like our box is cutting on the inside of the line. Use your head, Laney. It's a zero offset, no offset, no offset, because it's cutting on the same side of the line as our little pocket cut did. So that was a, that was a duh moment for me. Duh. All right, let's reset that preview and once again, preview those tool paths. I don't know what I was thinking. I actually wasn't thinking. But that bit's gonna be cutting on the same side of the line as our rectangle cut, so it's gonna cut on the inside line. And that's what I want. I want a nice, consistent line coming right straight across here. So there's not gonna be an offset there. My apologies, I'm wrong on that one. Um, I, uh, I want no offset on that. If we go and look at the top, Same thing on the top. Want a nice, consistent line running across there. Okay, some separation. All right, let's go ahead and um, on our profile lines, I'll make them a red. We'll go red. I don't know, that might look a little goofy, but uh, we'll go red. Not too shabby. But uh, yeah, so there is the raised version. Let's uncheck that toolpath. Uh, the raised version sign, let's turn off this and let's go back to a wood color. Let's go back to just kind of a, uh, let's go cherry. So you can see the raised effect and everything, right? So now if you're gonna do something like this, of course, outdoor weather, I mean, if it's if it's a covered type patio or porch, uh, you know, great, um, you know, uh, white oaks are good. Uh, you know, they're, they're pretty much weather resistant. 
um, cedars and everything. Um, if I know I'm gonna paint the sign, uh, then I'm you know I'm not I'm not typically going to use like a cedar or something. I'll use a poplar, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I, I would paint it with kind of an exterior paint, you know, something that will give it some kind of protection. Uh, if it's not going to be covered now if I'm if I've got a covered kind of patio, but you know almost like an outdoor foyer if you will uh, then I will um, You know then uh, you know I Could be a little lenient with my paint colors. I could use acrylics. I could use whatever But in this case if I'm gonna paint it, it's gonna be an outdoor sign It's sitting on the porch year-round and all I'm gonna use an exterior paint uh, and uh, I'm most likely uh, going to do uh, unless I do some taping off you know, um, like a lot of taping off, <laughs> uh, like uh, Aura Mask, you know, or something like that. Uh, you know, uh, Aura Mask isn't cheap, uh, so I, I probably I don't know about using Aura Mask on a project that big or whatever, but I might. Uh, where I can paint, I could either use exterior spray paint or something, or, or you know, something that's kind of good all around. Or generally, I would probably brush this in. I'll probably get a better, uh, you know, uh, a better look and everything uh, when I brush this in and stuff. So that is a uh, look at two different ways that we could do this sign. Number one sign here, right here. Very cool. Nothing wrong with that. Let's go ahead and um, let's bring in our America sign with our laurel wreath. Laurel wreath. Um, this one here is going to be a V carve, uh, all, all of it, the whole thing. Uh, and with the size of the letters, the I would probably do this with either two or three different bits. So the established 1776, because I don't this time I don't want a flat depth. I want a nice prism cut. Okay, a nice not prism, but a nice V cut. I don't want to put a flat depth in this. So for the laurel wreath and the established 1776. Uh, that will be V card by itself with a 60 degree V bit, no flat depth, no clearance tools. Um, and preview that visible toolpath. Okay, let's come in here and let's get this uh, turn the right way. All right, so uh, we have that 1776 with a 60 degree V bit. It's going to carve a good. It's going to have good depth, but not too much depth, right? And everything. Now, with the uh, stripe that's coming around here, the kind of little decorative border, I could probably get away with the 60 degree V bit on this as well. I don't want it too deep uh, on this. So, if the 60 was going to give me a little bit too much depth more than I would like then I'm going to go to a 90 okay uh, so we're gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and create this toolpath with the 90 degree V bit so we're gonna go with a 90 degree half inch V bit and uh, calculate that oh sorry uh, I still had the clearance tools checked uh, let me go back in there and uncheck those. Calculate that. All right, preview that visible toolpath. And yeah, I don't wanna to go too much deeper than that. I'm already at about 3 16 of an inch deep, 0.1805 uh, and stuff, and that's gonna be good. I don't wanna go any deeper than that uh, with that. Now, the text is the biggest of all. And uh, I, I could, again, I could use my 90 degree V bit, but it's gonna still be too deep. So I'm actually gonna use 120 degree V bit. 120 degree V bit on this. So again, uh, when it comes to V bits, I recommend uh, someone in their arsenal of tools have a 22 degree V bit, 60 and 90, and 120. Those are, those are four bits that I would have in my arsenal of tools. Uh, if I'm doing a lot of V-carve signs and all, and I'm working with big text and things like that, and I do want a nice V-carve, but a shallow cut, then, uh, then the 120 is gonna do that for me. So uh, that's what we're gonna use here. So once again, we're gonna select from our tool database, 
our 120 degree inch and a quarter V-bit. Uh, Amana makes a decent one. Um, I think Magnet makes a decent one. And then of course you can find some inexpensive ones on Amazon as well. And we'll calculate that toolpath. Okay, so now I wanna show you, let's uh, kind of turn this upright here. Okay, um, on this I'm cutting about a quarter of an inch deep with that 120 degree V-bit, uh, right? But let's, let me switch it up uh, real quick here. And I'm gonna do it with a 90, just so you can see the depth difference and stuff. Um, and let's go with a 90, but I'm gonna go back to the 120. This is for preview purposes only. And uh, let's reset that preview and preview those three tool paths. Okay. Now with the 90, I'm cutting about a half inch deep, 0.44, you know, inches deep and everything. And I don't want that big of a cavity in here. Uh, let me see if I can turn it some way where it looks where you guys can see. Let me see if I change this to maple. So you can see that cut a little bit better with the shadows and everything. I don't want that deep of a cut uh, for that. And it's big text and everything. I don't want to flat depth it and all that. So I'm going to use 120 degree V-bit. So that's gonna be my go-to bit for that, the big text and everything. All right, once again, let's go ahead and preview the visible toolpath. And I'll get that nice uh, quarter inch depth of cut there. And, uh, you know, on something like this, let's say that, um, Let's say that we do the laurel wreath in the text in blue. We'll do America in red. And we'll do the, um, if I wasn't painting the board, then I'd do that stripe around it in white. Uh, but I am going to be painting the board, so we'll make that stripe around it blue as well. Uh, so we'll go with a blue on that one as well. And then uh, let's change this to the white background, right? Uh, let's turn off that toolpath so you can see it. And so we go something like this, right? And again, uh, you know, just something. Th three basic simple signs. Uh, we're on number two. Uh, there's no second version of this. Uh, it's going to be just a simple V-carve, okay? Uh, we're just going to go with a simple V-carve on that one. All right, and last but not least, welcome. Welcome is going to be the same way. Because of the size of the letters, especially the star and stuff, it's actually going to be a 120 degree V bit. I'm going to use all across the board on this one. So I'm actually going to select the stars and stripes. It's only going to be one tool path for this one, uh, or welcome and stripes. Uh, and it's going to be a V carve with the 120 degree V bit. That'll give me about a, uh, a, a decent uh, quarter inch cut depth on the letters. But on my star, I think I'm a probably about three, I'm about a little, yeah, about a half inch deep. And that's fine on the star. Um, on my stripes, I'm about three eighths. And my text, it's hard to see. Let's get some color in there. Um, now, let's, uh, let's separate this with two different toolpaths so I can add color to it for you guys. Uh, I'm gonna do the stripes. Let me see here. I'm gonna do the stripes. Normally the stripes on a flag are red and white. I wanna kinda... The stars would be white. This one I'm gonna paint the board a different color. It's not gonna be a white board. Uh, this one here I'm gonna go with the... Uh, let's create the 
stripe toolpath. Okay, I'm going to create a second toolpath for the star. And this is for preview purposes only, the reason why I'm creating the three different toolpaths. And then WELCME, that will be its own toolpath as well. And on the stripes, we'll give that, uh, we'll give them kind of a red color. Oops. Let me reset that. Reset. Okay, preview the visible toolpath. All right, so that, uh, the text there, that'll be blue. The star, preview that visible toolpath, that'll be white. And then the stripes, preview that visible toolpath, they'll be red. And as far as the material, the backboard color, I may go with a natural wood color or um, I, I may go with kind of a, no, not black, that's too, what color would I go with that? I think I may just go natural wood. Um, yeah, none of those look good. Let's see if we go with just kind of a natural wood. Yeah, might go something like that, right? So, super duper simple, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, three simple signs, uh, and of course, you know, you you know, welcome signs. Uh, you know. Um, it, these could be anything, right? They don't have to be Fourth of July, uh, you know, uh, or or American kind of, uh, you know, themed. Uh, you could have these nice signs, you know, the Thompsons, uh, welcome, uh, you know, a nice little biblical script, whatever you want it to be, right? Uh, and uh, I'm sure you've seen those signs that uh, in on Google or, or things that you know of, of that hang out, uh, you know, outside your door, right? Okay, uh, so. When uh, the um, when it comes to this, you know, just uh, use your imagination. They're 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 super simple. They sell really well, uh, and, and things like that. And uh, these are simple enough, and the the carving time's not too long that you could carve them and be ready by Fourth of July coming up here, right? For uh, not necessarily just for sale, but you know, for your own home and what have you. Uh, just to give you a general idea, the welcome sign here. Uh, based on my speeds and feeds for my bits and everything, um, is going to take about seven minutes to cut, right? So seven minutes to make that welcome sign. Uh, the America sign. Uh, about 31 minutes, a little bit more detail. Um, the... Normal V carve sign uh, that j that was of the of the Let Freedom Ring with just the stars and everything V carved and the profile lines V carved no raised letters about an hour to carve that one not bad and then the raised one the one with the raised effect about an hour and seventeen minutes right. So not very long, you know, a couple hours out of the day, you got some nice looking signs and everything, especially the seven minute, you know, sign, you can knock out quite a few of those, uh, you know. Now let's say that you don't have a CNC that, um, that can accommodate 36 inches. So you're gonna have to tile the design. Create your tool pass first, that's first and foremost. And then we can come over and open up the tile manager in the software. And that's right, it's to the left of the save toolpath button. 
and um, it's going to tell me that my origin is wrong. Remember I said I got to change the origin to the bottom left corner, so I need to go do that first. So I'm going to change my origin to the bottom left corner. I should have done that when I rotated my board, but I forgot. I'm going to click OK, and it's going to ask me to recalculate all the tool paths. I'm going to go ahead and recalculate all the tool paths. While that's recalculating, I'm going to take a sip of my drink. I quit drinking sodas, guys. I quit drinking Sprite. I'm drinking coconut water now. Body armor, coconut water. Too much soda. Trying to get a healthier lifestyle. All right. Um, so once again, have your tool pass created. Make sure your orientation is the bottom. Your XY datum is the bottom left corner and we can open up our tile manager. Now in the tile manager, depending on your machine, you are either, um, if, it's a, if it's a long board that you're passing through, you're either passing it through your Y axis or your X axis, depending on the orientation of your machine. The digital wood carver CNC units, uh, the pass through is on the X axis. So for me, I'm gonna click on tile toolpath and I'm gonna feed through the X. Um, I could handle a 36 inch board, but let's assume we can't. Let's say we have a smaller cutting area and all. I could break this down, let's say, um, you know, uh, 14 inches along the X, update the tiles, and that would give me, you know, if I had a small CNC or something, uh, that would give me uh, three tiles that I would have to do. Tile one would be the WEL, uh, tile two would be the COM, and tile three would be whatever's left. Now notice that tile one and tile two, or two and three, uh, my tile separation is uh, gonna go kind of right through that E. Um, now if I wanted to, I could adjust accordingly if my CNC allowed me for that. So I could bring this down to, tw uh, let's go 13 inches and update the tiles. And let's go 13 and a half. There we go. So that way my tiles are split right between my letters, right? But don't be afraid, even if, you know, there's gonna be cases where you can't do that. You can't tile and, and those tiles be broken up right perfectly between the design. There's gonna be a time where that design's gonna, the letter or whatever it is, is gonna get cut through, or not cut through, but the tiles are gonna be separated by that. Uh, it'll create a seamless tile for you and as long as your setup is right, it's all about the setup, as long as you got a nice setup, uh, then you're gonna, it's gonna be bang up perfect. Uh, the tiling, a perfect tile job is based on the setup and I'm gonna talk to you about the setup. So let's say that I've got my design broken up into three tiles here and that's gonna accommodate my small CNC. Um, I can go ahead, I've got my uh, update tiles already checked, right? And now when I go to save the tool pass, and I'll just save uh, the, uh, um, uh, the welcome sign that I've got showing here. Uh, when I go to save the tool pass, notice that it says output tile tool pass. That's already checked for me. And I'm gonna output them all as one file because they're all using the same 120 degree V-bit. I'm gonna calculate, or I'm sorry, I'm gonna save that tool path, not calculate. And in my uh, downloads here, I'm just going to call this my welcome sign. Let me learn how to spell sign. Welcome sign uh, 120 DEGV bit. Now I don't like spaces in my name, so let me put my underscores in there. Welcome underscore sign underscore. There we go. Uh, and um, go ahead and hit save. Now let's go back and look at what was created. You're gonna see in uh, the sign, you're gonna see T1, welcome sign, T2, welcome sign, T3, welcome sign. So I have three tool paths to run. And what I'm gonna do on my table, let's close this, uh, hide this tool manager here. On my table, I have a 48 inch long table that is 30 inches wide. Okay. And um, I'll, uh, I'll turn the layers off in just a minute. 
Of that, I have a 40 inch cutting area that is 24 inches wide. There is a gantry. There is a router. And my cutting area starts at the center and the front of the table. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it to a new layer. Or I'll move it to the welcome layer, sorry. And that way I can turn off uh, Let Freedom Ring that popped up. And let's get this into position. So the first thing foremost is I'm going to make sure that my board is, you know, um, within my cutting area. But let's assume I had a smaller machine. Um, matter of fact, let's uh, let's let's look at something like uh, the mini carver, right? 18 by 24 cutting area. So let's uh, let's redo this for a minute. Uh, uh, that way it makes more sense. Uh, the width is going to be 30. And uh, 24. And the cutting area is going to be 24 by 18. Okay. That cutting area, again, once again, it starts at the, uh, it's centered and at the front of the table. And then my gantry and everything, get it on the table there. All right, cool. All right, now I'm going to take my CNC here and get the starting of my board on my table. There we go. Now what I do is I have a Swanson ruler. I bought it at Lowe's for $9.99. Uh, it's a 48 inch uh, ruler, about uh, two inches wide, uh, roughly, and about an eighth inch thick metal ruler. Uh, that ruler, I have holes drilled in it so I can uh, secure it right to my um, T-track uh, or to my wasteboard, depending on you know uh, what I have there. And I do have T-slots in my wasteboard, but I can secure it right down. I wanna make sure it's running square with my table. So what I do is I, uh, let's bring the router Let's kind of zoom into this a bit. Let's bring the router over to the edge, not the gantry too, just the router. All right. And let's bring this to the front of the table. All right, let's go in here and uh, make sure that welcome is the active layer. When I draw this next one, I'm gonna draw a uh, rectangle. And on that rectangle, let's assume that this is the two inch mark. I kind of used the two inch mark. Oops. I need a line. Two inch mark. All right, cool. All right, now down my board, every 13 and a half inches, let me zoom in here. Every 13 and a half inches, I'm gonna draw a line. I wanna make sure that line is right on 13 and a half inches, okay? And, um, you know, I'm gonna just draw a line. That's gonna be my reference line on my project board. So I'm gonna make a pencil line reference line. On my uh, initial start of the board here, I'm gonna put the first left corner on that um, number two mark, one and a half inch mark, whatever you float your boat. For me, it's the number two mark. Uh, I'm gonna make sure that's gonna, that number two mark is gonna be my reference. And that is where I'm going to be zeroing out my router bit on that bottom left corner there, on that mark. Now, one of the things that I do is I take my router uh, with a bit in it before I put the board on there. And I kiss that bit up against the uh, straight edge, clamp that in down, then I move my gantry down to the other end of the table. Doo -doo 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 and uh, make sure my straight edge is up against the bit, secure that end down. That way I know my straight edge is running true with my CNC's uh, gantry travel, right? With my router travel. Um, so now that I have that straight edge and everything um, on there, my I and clamp down, now I have a reference fence, like a fence on a table saw that my board can slide down. Um, as I as I'm as I'm carving and everything, 
So when I carve that first file tile number one, it's gonna carve tile number one, it's gonna come home. Once it comes home, then I'm going to, bear with me a second. Grab everything that I need. All right, once it comes home and stuff, I'm gonna slide that board down the table until that next 13 and a half inch mark is on my, let me get on that start point. And that's gonna be the start of tile number two. I'm gonna run the second file, run tile number two. When that one's done, it comes back home. I'm gonna unclamp my board and bring it down to tile number three. Make sure whatever's hanging off your table on both ends is supported. And if you have a good straight edge, a good reference point, uh, tiling your wood, making you, uh, giving you the ability to carve longer projects than your CNC's capabilities. Uh, you can even tile along the X and the Y if you're doing like a big sign that you're gonna have to assemble together, um, you know, when it's all done. But this, we're just passing that board through, carving the section, passing the board through, carving a section. And uh, you know, that'll give you the ability to do these things, right? Um, and so, on that uh, you know, third tile, make sure it's on the mark and uh, we can go cutting and all that stuff. Now, the tile manager uh, needs to really kind of be open while you're saving your tool pass, but then after that you can hide it. But you create your tool pass first and you open the tile manager, set up your tiles and then save those individual tiles. And like I said, you'll see your three files. In my case, I've got three files, tile one, tile two, tile three, okay? Now let's say I had multiple bits. I'm gonna run all the tool paths for tile one. So my 60 degree V bit, my quarter inch end mill bit and all that, they're all gonna have T1 in front of them. And I'm gonna run all those T1 tiles first before I move the board down, run all the T2 tiles, all the T3 tiles, if I was using, if I was changing bits. I'm not gonna run just the V bit bring the board back like a like a corner of the cob where I go dig, 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 back, dig, 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 back. Now I'm gonna run all this tile, then I'm gonna move over, run all this tile, move over and run all that tile, all the tool paths and everything. Got it, got it, got it. Um, the overlap function in the uh, tile tool path, that's a uh, tile manager. When we are sitting here, we have what's called a tile overlap. This allows for an, a margin of error on your part in your setup. So if you're not quite on the line or you didn't quite get the measurement right when you measure it and stuff, we can give ourselves a little bit of play, a little bit of an allowance and overlap. What that means is, let's say that I give myself a 16th of an inch overlap here and I update the tiles. Let's come over here and let's go zoom, 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 zoom. And you can see our gray area where the tile is and then this pink area here. Hopefully you can see that pink area. Can you see that pink area? Yeah. Uh, this is the overlap, right? What that means is when I'm carving and everything, it's going to carve what if there's any, I don't have any vectors here, so it's not gonna carve anything. But if I did have some vectors that fell into this area and all, it's gonna carve those on that first pass. It's gonna go ahead and carve them uh, and everything. So it's gonna go over and carve past that line. Now, when I you know, move my material down and everything for my tile two, if I'm not quite on that line, um, if I'm not quite on my mark, and you wanna, setup is very important, but if I'm not quite on that mark, I've given myself a, a, a quarter, of an, an eighth of an inch, 16th of an inch, sorry, 16th of an inch margin of error. So I could be off my line by a 16th of an inch and my sign's still gonna carve fine you know, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna lay out fine um, and everything. So if I were to, um, if I were to go to the get help on this, right? Our little uh, manual for the tile manager. And I come down to the tile manager here. Our tile overlap. Okay, let's go. Bear with me, it's hiding. Is 
where do they put it? The bit, uh, let's see here. Um, with this option selected, uh, you are asked to specify the width of each tile, right? Uh, and the required overlap, which is applied in each direction, okay? Uh, tiles are created from the bottom left of the model. And with this, the bit on your two and a half D cuts, it's kind of an overrun. Uh, that tile overlap is an overrun. Uh, and um, for this reason, the overlap distance uh, for independent tiles will typically uh, need to be at least equal to the radius of the bit or so. And for my 60 degree V bit, quarter inch V bit, my radius of that bit would be an eighth of an inch, but I'm, I did a 16th of an inch overlap in that example. Uh, but where does it say, what are the, the keywords here? Um, I'm not gonna read this. You guys can go and read this, but Because you're typically, uh, you'll typically be cutting the same piece of material with each toolpath tile, the overlap distance for feed through is not as critical uh, for, as it is uh, on the pass through as it is for individual tiles. Because on individual tiles, you're, you're doing an overlap on both corners of each one. You have to uh, look into that one uh, to see what I mean. And here's a picture example. On individual tiles, the, t the pink area, the tile overlap is on each side of each of the tiles when you're doing a, like a big panel. So it's not as critical on the pass through. Where's the pass? I don't think they have a picture of the pass through. It's not as critical on the pass through um, one which we're doing, but it, um, it allows for a margin of error. And I thought they had the wording there. Um, I thought they had the wording there. All right, I'm not gonna read that. It's a way the time, our time right now tonight, but it allows for a margin of error. It gives you a little bit of flex and freedom, guys. Uh, if you don't think you're gonna be, like you're gonna, you know, maybe I didn't measure my board just right for my 13 and a half kind of thing and you 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 don't do your setup right, you're just kind of being willy-nilly about it. But a good setup is a guarantee for a good tile job. It's all about the setup when you're doing tiling. Get yourself a nice straight edge. I don't care if it's a piece of scrap wood, just know that it's nice and straight. Um, you know, make a mark on there where that's your, that's gonna be your zero point, your datum position where you slide your tiles to. Get it, make sure it's running square with the travel of your table. You know, all of that stuff. When you put your board up against it, make sure that board is up against it. Make sure when you're sliding that board down that it remains, that edge is nice up against it and everything. If you focus on your setup and you do a really good setup, your tile jobs will be great. Um, and if you, if you need that little cushion, the margin of error, then use it. Uh, they recommend on the pass-through, uh, because it is an overcut, to be at least the radius of the router bit. So use that as your guideline. Okay, so for my my 60-degree V-bit, it would be an eighth of an inch. For my 120-degree V-bit, uh, it's an inch and a quarter, so it would be uh, five-eighths would be my, my overlap on that. Okay, uh, my overlap. So the radius of the bit on the pass-through. Now, I generally don't use the overlap or um, I, I've never really focused on the half, uh, you know, the radius of the bit, uh, which they recommend. Uh, probably a good idea, but I've always gone with the smallest overlap possible because if I'm gonna be off, it's only gonna be off by a fraction. But tile jobs are um, really great, giving you the capacity to do longer projects. You've guys seen those growth rulers that you know, that people make for kids' bedrooms where they can measure how tall they are, you know, um, and, uh, you know. Do they have, a, like, a percentage ruler to measure how irritating they get as they get older? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, um, 
uh, but tile tool pass is a great way to allow you to carve bigger projects. Like I have a 24 by 40 cutting area, but if I wanted to carve a 48 inch by 48 inch sign, then I'm gonna have two panels, two separate panels uh, of 24 inches and 24 inches cut down. And I'm gonna have my tiles broken up uh, probably every 36 inches though. So I have two tiles for that job. I might even do every 24 inches, who knows. But I'm gonna run one panel first, both tiles, tile one and two. And then my second panel, tile three and four. And then I'm gonna take those two panels over to the workbench, uh, assemble and glue them together do my cleanup, do my paint, decoration, finish, whatever you're gonna do. Uh, but that would allow me to carve those big signs on my smaller table. Uh, mostly I just pass through because I'm doing longer projects like trim or, or things like that. Um, those growth rollers are pretty cool. Um, but uh, um, very rarely do I have a call for a very large sign that's past my cutting area. But when it is there, the tile toolpath is great for having that. All right, let's go ahead and uh, you guys get the general idea on making some pretty cool signs. These are kind of porch signs and stuff. Look on, you know, I mean, hell, go to Pinterest, go to Google. There's a lot of cool examples of cool signs for the holidays and 4th of July's and stuff. Emulate them, try to add your little touch to them or what have you uh, and, and things like that. But um, hopefully you kind of got some information out of that. I don't know, maybe you did. All right. Um, Let's get out of that and let's come back over here to our flags. Now, I have my one by one nine scale here. I'm actually gonna take the uh, regular American flag there and I'm going to hold down my control key and drag a copy up here and I'm gonna size it up. So uh, let's go here and I know I want my uh, width to be 38 inches uh, and um, so I'm gonna go 38 by 20 there and I'm going to align to the center of my material F9 for those of you uh, but align to the center of the material there and on my material uh, I want to go change my job setup here because I have 20.313 it's going to be 20 even keep that aspect ratio there we go all right now we could do all kinds of cool things with flags and everything. And what I would like to do is um, I would like to uh, do a little bit, little bit of 3D, but also we can do some V carving as well because not everybody has a spire, but also, you know, uh, I'd like to be able to kind of do a little bit of, little bit of 3D uh, in things. Whatever we make on these, you're gonna get these vector files. You'll get those sign files as well too, those vectors for the three signs we did. Um, those will be available for free download in uh, the description of the video. Hang with me for just a few short more minutes and we'll call it a night. We're not gonna stay too long. It's 8.51, so we're gonna move right along here. But in here, uh, when I set up this job, when I do this job setup, I set it up with a very high resolution, but I didn't go extremely high like I normally do when I'm modeling. So what I would like to do in this case is uh, I'm going to open up another Aspire window I'm gonna hold down my shift key when I click create a new file. Uh, it's gonna be 38 by 20 by three quarters is fine. Um, I'm going to uh, touch off on the machine bed in this case because it's my whole board is covered by the flag. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna work from the bottom left corner. I'm gonna set this to an extremely high resolution extremely or maximum very rarely do I go into maximum unless I'm creating a really detailed model but extremely high is going to give me the detail that I want and I'm going to click OK cool beans I'm going to come over here and select this flag and I'm going to select the flag here and I'm going to right click and copy it copy and I'm going to go in here and paste paste and then again I'll hit F9 to center, cool beans. All right, now what I would like to do with this, just like uh, for any of you that bought the uh, 4th of July model, we had that 1776 flag and we had a little bit of a, kind of a split flag. There was some other stuff going on and things over here and all um, uh, and stuff. And what I would like to do is I would like to kind of do that split. Uh, so 
I'm going to actually import an image to trace. And uh, online, on Google, I went and I searched the term for uh, crack vector, splits vector, torn paper vector, and that's where I ended up finding the one that I wanted to use, uh, the tear uh, torn paper vector. And um, let's import that in. And uh, vector stock had an image uh, that uh, I could use. And so let's zoom into that. I'm going to trace this image, turn the fading off, and uh, I'm going to draw a box around this upper area here. And then I'm going to bring my threshold up, not to where it's too noisy. 75, like I said, is my magic number. But on this case, I'm actually going to go. I'll go 80 on this one. I want this to be all connected together. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on preview, apply and close. Uh, go ahead and get rid of that image. And over here, uh, I've gotta decide which cracker split that I want. And it's gonna be this one at the top. Uh, so I need to clean this up over here. So first thing I'm gonna do is ungroup these two images. I'm gonna delete this. And I'm gonna go into node editing mode. And I'm going to uh, delete this span here and here. Cool beans. And um, I'll join that together with a straight wrong way. Join that together with a straight line at the top just to close it off. Get rid of that piece of trash. Oh, Lord of mercy. Go back into selection mode and I'm going to get rid of this piece of trash here. And this piece of trash here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all of this down here. And I've got this kind of uh, tear crack going on. Let's uh, select all that and hit the number nine on the keyboard. I'm going to rotate it kind of like this. And I'm going to drag it over to my flag. And I'm going to scale it up. Okay. And I'm actually, there's two halves here. Uh, so I'm actually going to get rid of this lower half. And I'm just going to scale this one up. Okay. Cool. Got it? Good. All right. Now what I'm going to do is on my stripes here, I'm going to select all of my stripes, okay, and I'm going to group them together. So G for group, so group them together. I want the software treating them as one item, okay. Here, I'm going to hold down my shift key and select this item last, okay. That's going to be my boundary, if you will. And uh, before I do anything with that boundary, let me make sure I got it in the right place where I want it. Uh, let's, uh, let's go about like that. All right, one more time, select the stripes, hold down the shift key, select that boundary, and I'm going to use the trim tool. Trim tool, okay? On the trim tool, I'm gonna clear inside the boundary. Okay, and um, that worked on the one set of stripes, but not the other. Let's see, are you gonna are you gonna argue with me today?
Oh, I got it. I know what I need to do. I know what I need to do. I need to draw a rectangle and take that rectangle from here. Down to here. Bring this edge all the way to here. I can go outside, it doesn't matter. Uh, bring this down to there. And I'm going to go into node editing. No, I don't need to go into node editing. Uh, I'm going to do some scissor trimming. Trimming. So uh, let's, um, let's do this. Let's take those two items and move them over here for a minute. So you can you all can see what I'm trimming. Can you see that? You can see that. Uh, and uh, let's trim away some things. So let's trim away this up here. Let's trim away that line there. That. All of this. Everything outside of that crack all the way down to the bottom. All right, so now I have just that crack right there. Doop. Good. All right, let's get this back into position. That looks good. Uh, let's go um, once again, select all of our stripes. Hold down our shift key, select our boundary. And Clear, or trim, trim, it's the trim tool. Uh, clear inside boundary and, why are you not working for me today there, buddy boy? Give me a second. If this doesn't work this next time around, then I am going to, if it doesn't work this time, then I'm gonna use the subtract tool. The subtract tool, I'll use that. Um, if it doesn't work this time, I'm using the subtract tool. Move a copy over there. All right, one more time. Maybe I'm going to ungroup them. Maybe because they were grouped. That's why it was doing that. I think it's because they were grouped. Uh, clear inside the boundary. Nope, that was not why. All right, so this case, um, select this. Select that. Clear inside the boundary, still doing it. So we're gonna to go to the subtract tool. So I'm going to subtract once again. It did it again to me. Oh man, hold it there now, hold it. Okay, then I have to interactively trim. There is a way to subtract. I don't know why it's not doing it tonight, but I'm just going to uh, come in here and trim all of this away. Okie dokie. Let's see. Oh, I know why it didn't trim. It just showed me why it didn't trim because I had duplicates. There were duplicates on um, in there, but uh, I'm already halfway through this now. We gotta keep moving. So I'm just gonna trim, trim, trim. Trim. And get rid of that. Wonderful. All right, now, essentially, what I've got here is Every other stripe, every other stripe, uh, I'm not going to be carving. Um, it's, uh, but there is a vector for it. Okay, there is a vector for it. So what I mean by that is, if I put all this back, oops. All right, if I put all this back, right now there are on the stripes. Let me ungroup them. Every other stripe vector is here. So I'm going to delete every other stripe. Okay. 
Uh, keep, delete, keep, delete, keep. I'll get it right here in a minute, guys. Bear with me. Uh, let's see, that's gonna get carved. All right, every other one I'm gonna delete. So, delete that one, keep this one. Delete that one, keep that one, delete that one. Keep that, delete that, keep, delete. Keep, oh, I said keep, but I hit the delete button. Delete, keep, delete. Okay, all right, so that should leave just these stripes in here. Now I should be able to clear inside that boundary. No. Make sure my vector's closed. Oh, it's open. It's open. That's why it's not a boundary, it's an open vector. See, there's always ways to make mistakes. And when you think you know something and you can't quite figure out what in the world is going on, you know, there's a reason for it. There's a reason. It would not trim because it was an open vector. And it was killing me. So now I have a closed vector. And if I clear inside that boundary, it darn well better clear inside that boundary. Perfect. Open vector. Causing all that trouble. Wasting 15 minutes of our time in life. Um... All right, so now I have that, and uh, we can go ahead and move this out of the way. Right? All that good stuff. Now, actually, I didn't want to move that out of the way. Jeez Louise, Laney. Let me put that back. I want to leave that there uh, and stuff. Okay. Now I have kind of a flat area. In this flat area, I could do all kinds of pretty cool things. Um, I could uh, put, you know, the Constitution in there. I could put the Declaration of Independence. I could put a firefighter's logo. I could put a military logo. I could put, uh, you know, a biblical quote. I could put whatever the case may be. Now I have this blank space uh, where all this stuff is going to get done um, and everything. So... Uh, uh, I basically I'm going to be having this kind of three-dimensional flag here and then I have this flat spot and then we're going to kind of put a little bit of a wave through it all right so first thing that I would like to do is um, draw a rectangle around the entire boundary of my project board and now this could be V carved as well too we'll show you that also uh, doing a v-carve toolpath on this right now. I'm going to build a model because it's going to take you know That's going to take the most time uh, And in the modeling tools that boundary that I just drew that's going to be a flat model and I'm going to make it a quarter inch thick Okay, uh, it's going to kind of basically be the base of this um, This flat so I'm just going to make it a quarter inch thick right uh, once I make all the stars and stripes and build them up because you're building from the foundation up and I determine how thick my material is uh, Then I can determine if I want to make my base a little thicker or not and I can go into the properties and change that I'm going to start a new component here and on these stripes down here these guys I'm going to um, extend them past this boundary a little bit past that edge and on these stripes I'm that's gonna again it's gonna be flat uh, and uh, I'm gonna go a quarter of an inch deep that's fine but it's gonna be a subtract okay if I would have kept the other ones if I would have kept the other stripes instead of these then I could have just added right built up from there 
But, um, and now that I said that out loud, uh, what I do need to do is on my first component, I need to make it thicker. Uh, we're going to go the full three quarter inch board because I'm technically subtracting from this. Okay. Coming back into my stripes here, making sure, let's make sure all these vectors are closed, right? That's what was giving me a problem the last time and all. They are six closed vectors, wonderful. Um, I can go ahead now and subtract in my modeling tools. We're gonna go a quarter inch deep and um, they're gonna be a subtract. We're going to click apply. Okay. So there's our stripes there. Right. Oh, cool. Uh, start a new component. On this vector boundary right here. That is going to, uh, I'm going to go three eighths on this one, 0.375. Oops, too many decimal points. That's also going to be a subtract. So I want that level to be down just a little bit lower. Okay, so I have that nice crack definition there. Okay, so y'all can see that nice crack, you know, kind of defining those two areas. Right. Uh, start a new component. Now we have a choice uh, here on the stars. They could be down or up, right? Down or up. That's kind of uh, our choice on what we're going to be down or up. Uh, and in this case, I like my stars up. I like them raised uh, and everything. Um, so uh, that's what I'm going to do. Or we could subtract them down in if you want it. If you want it to be a nice flat level board. We could go, um, I would go with a prism cut at a 30 degree angle, uh, no base height on it, zero base height, and it would be a subtract, right? So uh, let's zoom in on that one once it builds it, right? So it gives us kind of a, uh, you know, 30 degree angle if you wanted your stars to look like that. I like them raised. You know, I like them raised. And um, on the stars, as far as uh, the prism cut and everything, uh, you can go with that or you can just go with a flat top. Uh, I think I'm going to go prism, but I'm going to limit the cut height. So what I'm going to do on this actually is I'm going to uh, give it a base height of about a sixteenth of an inch, 0.0625. I'm going to do a limit to height here, and I'm going to limit the height to uh, 30 second, 03125. And what that's going to do is that's gonna give me these uh, flat stars here with these edges. And don't worry about how rough it looks around the edge, that's because I'm just really zoomed in. Uh, but it gives me that kind of uh, flat edge. So we have the stars that look like this, right? Okay, now I've got my, that's it for the model, <laughs> done, right? So we could do prism or we could do the flat, however you want, you know, whatever looks best for you. I'm gonna do the flat. Uh, with the with a slight chamfer on the edges, uh, like I said, I'm going to do the flat with a slight chamfer. And if I wanted to, if I wanted to decrease that chamfer, then I could reduce that limit to height size. I could make it a sixteenth of an inch instead of a thirty second, or I could make it whatever, and uh, you know, um, and all that. But now, what I want to do is uh, I want to come in here and I want to turn off all the components except for the stars. Okay, except for the stars. 
With the stars being the only visible component, I want to add a draft to this. I want to add a draft. So I want the that little lip that I put at the bottom, I want that to kind of draft out. Okay. And uh, I want that draft to be a 30 degree draft. And I'm going to click apply. Okay. So what that does is it just gives me a, a bit of an angle here uh, on my stars. It gives it another little dimension to the stars, if you will. Uh, you'll see what it looks like when it looks uh, no, all smoothed out and everything. All right. So um, I could go. Let me see what 60 looks like. Double the draft of the angle of the actual initial 30. Let it build it up. Yeah, let's go 60. I don't know, they look sexy as a 60. Yeah, 60 looks good. It'll look great when it's smooth. All right, now that that's done, I want to turn off the original stars because I've got the new model with draft. So it says new model with draft. And that was a 45. Did I not type in 60? I thought I typed in 60, man. Did I not type in 60, guys? I could have swore I did. Let me delete that. Let me turn that back on. Turn my stars back on. Let me go back in there. No, how in the heck did I get uh, 45 on there? Oh, 45 is the maximum I can go. Uh, duh, I forgot. 45 is the maximum I could go. So I am gonna go, um, I am gonna go with the 30. Oh, I was like, wait a minute now. I know I typed 60 in there, but uh, I'm gonna go with the 30. All right, cool beans. All right, turn that original model off. Now I have my draft model here. Now I'm gonna turn that model with a 30 degree draft. I'm gonna turn that off now, okay? Turn it off and I'm gonna turn my stripes on, okay? I'm going to turn my stripes on. Not that, my stripes, Laney. And a component number two. <clears throat> now on my stripes here uh, and everything, it just looks like, you know, literally just stripes and all. Uh, I would like to add a little bit of a draft to it too. just a, So it's not straight up and down. I want a little bit of an angle to those, those pockets that are getting formed uh, and everything. And it's just going to be a slight angle. So I'm going to go 15 degrees on that. Degrees on that. Okay. Can't really tell anything here until we get everything turned on. Um, but uh, now I can turn off my stripes. And I want to move that down in the list here. All right, so turn my base component back on. And make my stripes a subtract, not a merge. Make my stars an add. Where's my stars at? They're coming. There we go. And those stripes should have been an add, not a subtract, because I drew them as a negative. So let me do that one more time. Because I drew them as a negative. So they need to be in a, there we go. Yep. And then turn on my component number three, which is that lower level over here. Cool beans. All right, let's go into full 3D mode here and uh, let's click off of that. And so we have this flag right here, right? Now I could, you know, I went three eighths of an inch deep here. I didn't need to go that deep for this. 
So what I'm gonna do is on this component, I'm gonna give it a little bit of base height. Uh, or I, I'll give it some shape height because it's shape and base. In this case, it's flat. Uh, let's go. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's go point two. You're like, wait a minute, I thought you were giving it height. Why are you taking numbers? It was 375, why are you gonna height? Because it's set up as a subtract. Right, so I'm already subtracting down. I want to subtract from the surface. I want to subtract that that point two instead of point three seven five. Cool beans. All right, so we've got this here. Wonderful. Uh, let's go ahead right now and add some smoothing. So uh, over all of this, uh, I don't. I like to keep my originals intact, and when I smooth, it's going to have to be baked together as one item. Right. So I'm going to insert a new level. I'm going to select, hold down my control key so I can select my four components here. And then again, I'm going to hold my control key down, hold down my left mouse button and drag those copies up into level two. And then I'm going to turn off or uncheck level one. Okay. Done. All right, with all those selected, I'm gonna go into smoothing. It's gonna say that it needs to be baked together as one item. And I'm gonna say okay because that's copies. My originals are still separated and intact in case I want to change something. All right, with the smoothing, I'm going to go ahead and pull it up. I like pulling it up a small amount. Um, I'm gonna kind of smooth off these edges, but not too, too much. I'm watching the stars, I'm looking at the stars. That'll be good there. All right, cool. And um, click OK. Now, if I look very closely, this is where uh, issues happen and things like that. If I look closely here, I have all these little splinters of wood right here, right? I have all these little splinters where that when I subtracted this pocket here from the model, the void areas and everything uh, left these little splinters. So on every one of the stripes, I have, you know, those kind of like little splinters there and they're, you know, they're, they're gonna flick away, but it's also gonna require me to clean up. I don't wanna clean it up. So what I'm going to do is here, from where I made my model and everything, I'm actually gonna, that's why I left a little excess overhang here. I'm actually going to bump this shape back just a little bit. Right about there. And on this model right here, this model, okay, um, not that model, my stripe model, um, Bear with me a second. This is why you keep your originals intact. I'm gonna turn off the stars. On my stripes, 
with that border selected, I'm gonna come up here and clear the area of the selected component that's inside the vector. I wanna erase or clear it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear that out. Okay, what that has done is when I turn the components back on, and I zoom in here, I have a nice little, instead of those little splinters and everything, I have a nice little defining edge here, okay? So I got, instead of those little splinters that I was having and all where there was nothing there, I have, I have a nice little ledge, okay? So now that I have that nice little ledge there, I want to um, take that model, which were the stripes. I want it to be visible. I want it to be the only thing that is visible. Okay. And I'm going to come in and add a little bit more draft to it. Oops. I hit the smooth button. Hold on a second. Close. I hit the smooth button, guys, not the draft button. Close that. I'm not ready to smooth. Got to let it calculate first. There we go. Close that. Let it regenerate again. There we go. Smooth. Or, ah, shoot. Draft. Draft. Not smooth. There are no components visible to be able to add a draft. Okay. Let me see. Okay, so that one already has a draft. look at it yeah okay that's fine it already has a draft so I can't add a second draft to it I'll deal with that okay once again let me take all three components sorry I just needed to create that lip you see that defined lip right there now I just needed to create that defined lip okay so I got a nice defined tear there. All right, once again, hold down the control key and select each one of these four components. Then hold down the control key and drag, hold down that left mouse button and drag those components back up to the top. We're kind of redoing what we did just a minute ago. I just didn't have that defined lip there. So I was getting trash at the end of the stripes. Turn off the original components. and then smooth these out. Now when I smooth this, bake, yes. Now when I smooth this, I won't have those little splinters. I'll have a nice defined edge where those stripes stop and that component over on the right where I'm gonna be doing stuff starts. Okay, so I'm gonna slide that smoothing bar up just a little bit, watching my stars and my part and everything a little bit too much. I don't like doing a whole lot of smoothing, just enough to break the edges. There we go, click okay. Okie dokie, tokie dokie. All right, now that we have that, Let's go ahead and uh, we'll put it. We'll put some uh, text in there or something that we're going to be guard. But let's create a little bit of a wave, All right? Let's create a little bit of a wave on this. Um, for this, I'm going to go ahead and add a new layer, and I'm going to turn off 
the flag portion layer so I have uh, just a blank slate here for a minute so y'all can see what's happening. And um, in this new layer, I'm going to draw a line. Oh, let's go with an angled wave. So I'm going to draw a line up here. And I'm going to draw a line here. Actually, I'm not going to draw that second line. I'm going to copy and paste this one. So I'm going to hold down the control key and drag this over. There we go. Let's make it a little bit longer. Okay, so these are going to be my drive rails. I'm kind of bringing a wave across at an angle on this and everything. Now I need a profile. Uh, and so on the profile, I'm just going to use the curve tool. And I'm going to kind of create a bit of a wave. And what I want on this wave is I want to make sure that uh, the top and the bottom are pretty much kind of even across and everything. So I'm going to go into node editing here and I'm going to kind of pull these things up. Anything that's kind of past that line, I'm going to pull up a bit and anything that's um, I want to be a little thicker on this end. Okay. So as that wave ripples, it's going to get tighter across here uh, and everything. Make sure, you know, when you're doing, if you're doing waves or anything like that, make sure that, uh, you know, uh, it's not going to be such a distracting wave that you can't read whatever it is that you're, you know, that you're carving and stuff, uh, you know, in that, in those areas and stuff. If you're putting text along, you know, make sure it's not something too distracting. If you're going to put a military logo or something in that flat spot or whatever, you don't want a real big wave. And I've got a real tight wave here. I've got, I'm loose back here but I'm tied up here, kind of the, the you know, uh, and everything. So, um, you know, you, you may want, you know, to kind of space those things out and all that stuff, whatever the case may be. All right, so I've got my, uh, my path here, okay? And I'm gonna size it down, let's get out of node editing mode. I'm gonna size it down a little bit more appropriate um, as far as stretch wise goes because it's going to stretch between these two spans okay here we go here's the magic of it all we're gonna come back over and um, go into our two rail sweep tool I'm gonna select this rail here and this rail going to be my drive rails. They're going sweeping down in this direction. We could sweep upward as well too. See how that looks also. And um, we're going to uh, size this, but I want to scale this to an exact height. I want to kind of keep it about three quarters of an inch. This would look great as an inch and a half thick flag or whatever, but I'm trying to stay within the three quarters uh, and everything. Um, I may not be able to, to get a good wave in it, uh, if it was flat, no problem, right? Just going to be a basic flat flag, but with a wave, it's going to add some dimensions to it. So I will try to, my best to scale it or keep it at uh, three quarters of an inch uh, there and to see what that looks like. So it's going to sweep this wave uh, coming across those two paths, and it's going to scale that wave based on the space of that selection. And I am quite a far away from the flag corners and stuff. Uh, so if we look at the uh, 3D view here, 
you know I have it's just a very subtle wave right just a just a very subtle wave well let's make it a little bit more dramatic let's click reset okay and let's bring our lines closer together so it all has to do with you know our pass and you know how they're uh, how they fit together so or how far away they are from the material let me close this tool Bring that there. Bring that there. And let's do that one more time. Select my drive rails. Hold that shift key. And then select my profile. Scaling it to three quarters of an inch and apply. You guys still with me? I had a big drop off about half of you disappeared. About about 20 minutes ago. That my my it looked like my heart rate just went in my little analytics. That thing went shoo. Goodbye. Alright, let's take a look at our 3D view now. Okay. So we've got you know, um, a bit of our wave here. Let's take it one, one more step further. I'm going to reverse the rails. So I'm going up in this direction. I'm going to size I'm going to size this. I'm actually going to condense it in more. And really quickly go into note editing mode. I'm going to pull this big hump down just a little bit. And this one down a little. go all right last time and then we're gonna move on so select my rails So we have a little bit more of a wave and a ripple in there. You may be able to see those ripples a little bit better. Very subtle, nothing, nothing too, too crazy, right? I could have drawn the profile where it was flat across here and just rippling in the corner, right? You know, and stuff, but I usually have the wave go across the whole flag. And then for the last part of this, let's close that. We're done. Let's uh, come back in here. I'm going to turn off this layer, but I'm going to turn on the flag proportions layer again for a minute. I'll turn off uh, the model for a second. So I'm just turning off the layer just to hide the model for a minute. And uh, let's go ahead and throw some text in here. I don't know if you'd put an exclamation part on that or not. Um, All right, let's go with uh, 
freedom. Let's break this up into text blocks. Or text lines, break the text block up into text lines. draw two curves I'm gonna hold down the control key and copy that I want to get them uh, position and size before I do what I'm about to do so right about there and I want to do a distort on the word freedom. I want to distort it between two curves. So I've got um, my bottom curve I want to select first, my top curve second, and my text. Let me get the text selected. There we go. Text selected in the two curves, and I want to apply that. Whoa! <laughs> All right, I should have done that with the uh, word freedom straight and then turned it 90 degrees. Let me do that really quickly. Um, let me do that really quickly. Uh, go into rotate absolute and change that to zero and click apply there we go all right really quickly let me take uh, one more time and select that my bottom rail which I want my bottom rail to be a little bit closer do 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 right about right about like that uh, bottom rail text sorry bottom rail then the top rail distort between two curves and click apply there we go then I'm going to rotate freedom a little bit. All right, let's get rid of those two curves. And now in node editing, if I want to adjust something, um, I can, you know, change something a little bit. So I want this to look like it's flowing as well, uh, you know, kind of deal. Uh, probably because my ripples are going up, it would probably look better if I turned it. Probably look better if I turned it like that, but I'm going to go like this. Heck with it. I'll clean it and do something not nice for you guys. You guys can fill in the blank over there when I when I give you these files. Um, all right. Let freedom ring. Uh, we could do happy 4th of July. We could do whatever the case may be. But this is going to be a, let's create the tool pass quickly. And then we'll wrap it up for the night. Uh, 3D rough cut. Uh, first of all, I've got to turn the model back on. Have your model on. This is going to be V carved in. I'm not going to do it raised. If I was building a model to raise, that'd be fine. But I want it to be carved in. Uh, I want to use the uh, material as the boundary. I'm going to do a Z level raster with my quarter inch end mill, and I'm going to calculate the 3D rough cut. Okay. Uh, let me go up and make sure that everything is all good with my model as far as the material setup goes. Uh, I didn't think it was. There's an error there. Uh, I need to adjust my model height a little bit. 
and uh, it's it's over it's 0.739 it's over or 0.7938 it's over the three quarters so uh, what I'm gonna do really quickly is in my um, model let's see here see what component 5 was that was the wave and uh, yeah see if I had an inch and a half material this would be perfect for an inch and a half material but I'm going to reduce the height and I'm gonna do it a little bit different than doing the size there I don't want to sacrifice uh, too much but I do have a lot of material underneath that I can sacrifice so what I'm going to do is go into the modeling tools and I'm going to use this tool right here, replace values below Z. And uh, I'm going to take off about a quarter of an inch of material with a transparent back and I'm going to click apply. So that brought it down. Let's do that a little bit more. Let's do that again. Let's lower it down by another quarter of an inch. I'm kind of sneaking up on it. I don't want it too thin in certain areas. All right, can't do that. That's. That's bringing me down to virtually almost nothing kneel right there. You know, so um, I'll undo that last one. And then I'll just go in and uh, set my height from here 0.74 all right and finally now I'll go in and recalculate that tool path Cool. 3D finish cut. I'll go in and uh, I'm going to use a just a typical uh, 16th in, or 8th inch uh, tapered ball nose with a 16th inch radius. Again, using the material as the boundary. Raster cutting along the X. Almost there, guys, and we're going to call it a night. So yeah, you're gonna get the uh, anatomically, not anatomically, you're gonna get the uh, proportionally correct flags, uh, the 1776 uh, Betsy Ross flag and the United States flag that are scalable, right? They're on a one by 1.9 scale, but it's uh, they're perfectly laid out for you. You're gonna get those vectors. Uh, you're gonna get this model uh, that we create. Uh, you'll get it with and without the wave. Uh, you'll get it with and without the wave. So two separate models of this flag uh, with the kind of the split edge. Um, and, uh, yeah, what I'll do is, okay, we'll do it with, uh, with the wave, uh, with and without the split edge, and then we'll do just a flat model with no, um, no wave in it, right? So you'll have those three flag models. For those of you that don't have a spire, you'll have those three models to play with is STL files that you can import in. Um, they're going to be 38 by 20. That's the size they are. They'll be scalable from there, but they are going to be 38 by 20. The models will be. And um, yeah, the three signs, the three uh, porch signs, right? That'll be my free uh, happy 4th of July little gift to you. But be sure if you want another cool model pack of 4th of July models, 
United States outline models and some other things, uh, $25, you can email laney.shaughnessy at spindletv.com. Just put 4th of July in the um, in your subject line, 4th of July project pack. I'll send you an invoice. Once you pay the invoice, I'll send you the files, but these will be free. They'll be in the description of the video at the end of the video uh, for you to download. Give me about an hour to get them in there. You'll have those. Uh, but yeah, there's a whole nother model pack uh, available for sale with some pretty cool stuff. And it is all 25 bucks. And all those proceeds help go towards my building that I'm working on. All right, so let this, uh, this is almost done calculating. Uh, when it's finished calculating, uh, we will uh, we'll create the V card text and uh, show you how to project that onto the tool, onto the uh, 3D model. And uh, we'll go from there. Let me see if I, uh, while this is calculating, let me see if, um, yeah, in, in the chat right now, laney.shaughnessy at spindletv.com. And uh, subject, 4th of July project pack, right? Uh, that would be the subject line. There you go. It's in the chat. But let me go back up and see if I, uh, Laney, I signed up for training. Do I have to add any programs to my computer to communicate during the training? Uh, Chris, uh, you would have received a confirmation email uh, for your sign up for your training. In that training, uh, or in that email is a link for TeamViewer 11 for you to download uh, download and install that. That's how we will uh, connect together uh, when we do your training and everything. So Chris, uh, it's already in your email confirmation that came to you once you signed up for training. Let's see here. Uh, we have the big CNC 60 by 108 with ATC. Contacts Laney, uh, contact us Laney for your project uh, Calusa Chemics, uh, for sure, Crystal. Hey, Crystal, how you doing? Hey, Chris, I didn't see you sneak in there. How you doing? Uh, we have a web page on Facebook. I know you already know. Cool. Absolutely. Very cool. Uh, Crystal, where are you guys at? You're in South Florida, right? Let me know. Because I am looking, one thing I am looking for is, uh, I don't know what kind of, what your shop looks like, Crystal. You may have to you might use my email and send me a picture of your shop because what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a shop to have a photo shoot, uh, something with, you know, workbenches and tools and a CNC or what have you, uh, to have a photo shoot done for my new uh, launch website video thumbnails, all that stuff for uh, my, my new channel uh, and everything. And uh, since my shop's not ready, uh, I need to do a photo shoot. And I'd love it to be somewhere close to me in Florida uh, because I've either got to find a photog hire a photographer in the area if it's too far away or the local photographer that I'd be working with, uh, I'd have to pay travel fees to them and everything and their sessions are already not cheap. But uh, uh, if you guys, any of you guys are in the Florida area and you got a nice, uh, decent size shop that would accommodate a photographer, myself and, uh, lighting and all that stuff, let me know. I need a shop and I'll, uh, be happy to, uh, make arrangements with you as far as compensation to borrow your shop for about an hour or two for a photo shoot. Uh, let me know. And, uh, if you guys have that, cause I threw that out in the Facebook owners uh, group for digital woodcarver, but I figured I'd throw it out there to you too. Cause I'm looking for a studio to do a photo shoot in or a workshop, a workshop. Something that's got something that might have like some nice little workbench areas or something or, you know, a table saw or, or bandsaw or whatever to do some nice little photos, right? Nice photos and stuff. I got to do a photo shoot. They sent me my, uh, my uh, sample photos of what they want. My marketing guys did. I'm like, oh, my shop's not ready yet. I need a shop. I need a background. I need a backdrop. Let me know. 
Um, if I import a files, if Bob, Bob Frail, hopefully you're still with me and didn't drop off. If I import the files you created tonight into vCard desktop, will it work? Or am I limited to 24 by 24 always? Uh, Bob, you're not technically limited to 24 by 24. You can, cre you can import those bigger projects. You just have to tile your design in desktop. Desktop does have a size limitation of 24 by 24, but anything beyond that has to be tiled. We talked about tiling earlier, so you would have to tile those jobs or size them down to fit within your 24 by 24 area because they are scalable. Uh, but um, yes, you will be able to import them in and all that stuff. Uh, desktop will say, hey, this project exceeds uh, you know, 24 by 24, and it'll just tell you you have to set up tiling. Tiling, you got to do a tile toolpath. So, but yes. Um, let's see here. Kool Aid, can you give some tips on painting and uh, good brands uh, you use? Uh, well, I I'm a low shopper. You know, I'm not, I don't really, I don't really uh, cheat on Lowe's too much with Home Depot or things like that. Um, but uh, believe it or not, when I'm doing rattle can, spray can, uh, especially blacks, uh, when I'm doing my flat blacks and everything, their project paint can, very inexpensive. I love the way it puts on and I love how fast it dries. Um, this is almost uncalculating, guys. Um, I love how how it dries and everything uh, when I'm uh, doing uh, brush paint or something uh, I, I use the uh, Valspar signature paints and um, bear with me a second hang tight for one second while it's calculating I got to I just painted, hold on a second, I gotta paint, paint, paint right here or something. I'm back. All right, let's, uh, while that's calculating, give me one second here. Let's go full for a minute. So uh, when I prime uh, and everything on my uh, uh, yeah, this is my primer. I love uh, the Valspar High Hide Primer Sealer, right? Love that. Uh, and if a project of a painting a sign, uh, if I'm brush painting a sign indoors and everything, uh, I'm a big fan of the Infinity. Uh, it's a Sherman Wing Rands, but available at Lowe's, right? Uh, the Infinity and everything. Um, when it comes to spray cans, rattle cans, uh, and stuff, um, I love the project. Paint, it's literally what it's called, Project Paint Black. Uh, if I'm doing colors and everything, I don't necessarily like the paint and primers, you know. Um, but, uh, but I honestly don't know what the name of the paint is on the top of my head. Um, Digital Wood Carver YouTube channel. There's a video uh, that I did on finishing tips on the Digital Wood Carver YouTube channel. Find the finishing video. And it shows all the kind of finishes that I use. Yep. All right. I'm not sure why this took so long to calculate, um, but it's taken a while to calculate. Uh, it's almost done. Let's uh, switch back and let's get me back down here in the corner. It's almost done. Um, so 
while that uh, calculates, once again, you guys will get these uh, files here. I will scale them up to a bigger size, but they will be proportionally correct. Uh, and, um, you know, they're based off of the, uh, the this image here. Uh, but I've done all the work for you. You'll get those files. You'll get, uh, you know, the two larger versions of them, of course. And uh, you can scale them up to whatever, down or up whatever size you want. And uh, the three signs that we did, uh, you'll get the vectors for those. And if you have 10.5, I'll put the 10.5 VCAR Vectric Aspire file in here. Um, there's no models in here, so uh, I can save it as a VCAR file, but you gotta have 10.5, but I'll also have the DXF and SVG files for you as well on the three uh, signs that we did, the welcome sign, the uh, America sign, let me turn off those tool paths, and the let freedom ring sign, right? Cool deal, you'll have those. And then we are wrapping this up. Come on, uh, guys, come on. Not guys, but Aspire. I don't know why Aspire is rocking so long. Let me go up here and save these real quick while I'm thinking about it. Uh, porch signs. Let that save and close out of that. Flag proportions, save the changes in that one. and exit out of that wonderful all right our 3d finish finally finished um that was uh insanely long uh time but uh let's preview that uh tool path And then we're going to say good night after we preview that. Uh, let's scroll down here. Oh, let's see here. Good, Bob. Uh, yeah, understand tiling now. Uh, tiling is a great way to be able to exceed, uh, you know, larger than your, your projects. All right, last thing is, let's do the uh, V-Carve toolpath. I am actually, because of the size of this, this is 20 inches by 36, I am actually going to uh, do this with 120 degree V-bit, so I get a nice, somewhat shallow carving, uh, and um, not too deep. Uh, but uh, one of the important things is that I project it onto the 3D model. Make sure that that is checked when we calculate that toolpath. And then uh, we can preview that toolpath. And of course, we could probably do something cooler than let freedom ring, you know, uh, as far as on the flag is concerned. Um, let's go kind of with a blue, whatever the case may be. But uh, you, you get the gist, you get the idea, right? You could do whatever you wanted over here. If you had a, a carving of a, a military symbol or a firefighter symbol or whatever, you kind of had this cool little kind of a split flag area um you know where you know you can you can do whatever you want there uh an example of that and this is the last thing i'm going to say uh regarding um regarding that uh project let's go <coughs> excuse me my mouse is going a little crazy let's scroll down slowly and right here maybe maybe guys hold on a minute 
I know I'm not losing my mind. To a model. Police, where is fourth? Father's Day. Why does my 4th of July file always elude me? Let me go here. 4th. There we go. Lord of mercy. I was going crazy there for a second. Uh, this gives you an example, kind of, uh, you know, that same uh, look and feel, you know, where you could add some text, you could add some kind of symbol, you could add kind of whatever you want, right? Uh, by the way, this flag here with this text, uh, the uh, uh, Declaration um, of Independence, uh, this is... Uh, inside that 4th of July project pack that I told you about uh, that you could deliver or that you could order. All right, guys and girls. Uh, so uh, happy 4th of July. Um, we will be, we will be uh, next Tuesday or the 4th of July is on Sunday. I'm going to be closed on Monday. We'll be back that Tuesday. I don't think I'm going to close, uh, you know, be off that Tuesday, but uh, we'll be back. Uh, we still have another Tuesday in the middle here, right? Before the 4th of July. Am I correct on that? Yes, we do. The 29th. Hey, if you want to watch something pretty cool tomorrow night at 7 p.m. on the Digital Woodcarver YouTube channel, Burl Tischer and I are going to be visiting one of our customers. Uh, he's going to go in Indiana and I'm going to go in Florida. We're going to visit one of our customers' storefronts. And we're going to do our podcast, our one-hour podcast on the Digital Woodcarver YouTube channel from the customer store, showing some of the things that they make and what they're selling at their stores, uh, their actual, you know, stores, uh, storefronts and all. Uh, and uh, we're going to be doing it live on site at those two locations. So tomorrow at 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time on the Digital Wood Carver YouTube channel. So youtube.com forward slash digital wood carver. Check it out. Come out and visit us. We're going to be on for an hour from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen. Have a wonderful night. Thanks for hanging out with me for this long. Good night.